Come on, you can be better than that, Jesus. Come on, let's lift them up in this place just a few days. Come on, let's lift them up in this place just a few days. Come on, let's lift them up in this place just a few days. Hallelujah is the highest place. Come on, put your mind in the service. Put your mind on Jesus right now. Leave everything else outside the door. Put your mind on Jesus right now. Come on and give him praise. Come on and give him honor. Come on and give him glory. Come on, lift him up. Hallelujah. Make his name big in this place. Make his name big in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Has he been good to you? Show him praise. Has he made a way? Show him praise. I come to tell you, if you didn't come here to praise him tonight, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. But if you came to lift him up, if you came to magnify your Savior, open your Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our first. Come on, you can do better than that for Jesus. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for our first revival. Amen. We are not in our space. Our AC on our side went out, so we are borrowing a space. But that's all right. Praise God. God is still going to get the glory. Amen. Anyhow, now I will tell you. Amen. I heard everybody say, now you better preach. Amen. Well, you better put on the word. All right. Praise right. God. I can't, I can't preach. Amen. To a dead church. Praise God. 
You can only get out, amen, what you put in the service, amen. And if you pull on the word, you can pull it out, and God will get the glory. Is that right? Amen. If you will help me honor, amen, all the ministers on the pulpit, amen. Those, amen, and their spouses, amen. I do honor the Lord. Amen. For Reverend Heights, praise God. Amen. From Amen. Uh, Bond Avenue Church. Amen. Where Bishop Amen Ford Senior is the pastor and bishop there. Amen. For Minister Laurie, praise God. Amen. For Auxiliary Bishop, Amen. Tony Green, praise God. For New Life, New Beginnings, with Chief Apostle Nathaniel Green. Thank God for all of you that have come out to the house of the Lord. Thank all of you that drove from Sykeston. Amen. We thank y'all. Let's give the Lord a hand for the musicians. Thank God for the song with leaders that led the service. Thank the Lord. Well, thank God for all y'all. I could call all y'all names, but thank the Lord. Amen. For amen. All the beautiful ministers, missionaries sitting out there. You know, we got a minister heights back there. Amen. Wave your hand. God bless you. Amen. Minister Trailer, missionary trailer back in the back. Praise God. And uh, y'all, y'all, y'all know that the dynamite evangelist that was up preaching, amen. Right. She could have took the mic. My mother-in-law, <laughs> praise God, amen. Amen. I thank the Lord for my own mother being here tonight. Yeah. Praise her. Yeah. She had to work, amen. Two hours from home, drove two hours back, then switched clothes and drove all the way up here right. to be with us in yeah. service, yeah. amen. And if you would, please help me. Definitely give honor and give thanks and give praise to the most beautiful, precious, glorious woman in my life. To amen. Our elect lady, to Martin. Amen. 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 My Cinderella. Amen. Right. Amen. I did deliver her and bring her out. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for all of you that have come here. I do thank the Lord for my wife because I tell you, I remember when we first got together, I used to ask her, Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm a pastor. That's what God called me to do. Are you ready? Are you ready? Well, in this last month and about a month and a half, she's been more ready than I have been <laughs> in this whole process. Amen. Oh, Just before the service, praise God. She had me in the back rebuking me, praise God. And encouraging me. Right. And I thank the Lord, praise God. For everybody. And how God is growing up. Amen. And you know, as I was praying, you know, sometimes you can have your own plan. Sometimes you can have your idea how things are supposed to go. But that's when you might think because it went your way, you're going to get glory. But God will wreck all plans so that you know it was nobody but the Lord when it's all said and done. God wants to get all the glory. The Bible said he shared his glory with no man. Amen. The Bible said he stripped Gideon down all the way down to 300 to prove a point. Praise God. And so I'm not discouraged by who's here and who's not here because the glory of the Lord is here. And as long as the Lord is here, amen, as long as the presence of God is here, whatever it is that you came here for, you can Get it if you put your mind in the service. Oh, yeah. Come on, shout amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 23. I'm not going to try to be long at all, but I'm going to take my time. Yeah. Amen. And give what God has given to me. I thank the Lord for all of you. Psalms 23. I thank the Lord for all of you that did come, all of you that have given. Amen. We're looking for God to do greater things. Yeah. Amen. I do thank the Lord for those that who, who couldn't be here but has encouraged us. Amen. Along the way. Amen. And this is our beginning stages. And I promise you, I won't remember your face. Amen. Those that have pressed their way out to our first revival. Amen. It's just encouraging to see all of you that have come out and uh, uh, pressed your way. Psalms chapter 23. Amen. And we know it's a familiar scripture. And I'm going to read it. And if you would, would you please... As our custom stands for the reading of the word. Amen. Psalms chapter 23. I'm going to read it. When you have to say amen. amen. If you still look and say, hold on. All right. If you can't find it, say Bible study. All right. Amen. Psalms chapter. Them cell phones happen. Y'all stay out of Bible study, huh? Praise the Lord. Bible app here. 
Amen. Psalms chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Oh, thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest yes. my head yes. with oil. Yes. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for yes, the reading Lord. of your word. If you would, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it was worth the oil. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It was worth the oil. Amen. It was worth the oil. As I begin to look, God begin to minister this into my spirit. It was worth the oil. We know that oil is a representation of the spirit. Yeah. Amen. Oil is a representation of the anointing. Amen. When God would pour out oil on someone, that was a, uh, signifying that they were anointed. The Bible tells us that when Samuel went down to Jesse's house, he called all the boys, they walked right. before him, well, and then when he, when God revealed who it was, the Bible said he took the horn of oil and poured it on David's head, anointing him as king. And then, so we know that the oil represents the anointing. But how many know the oil doesn't come free? Boy, come on now. There is a price you yeah. must pay for the oil. Oh, but you have to ask yourself, is it worth the oil? Is what I've been through worth my anointing? See, because your anointing just doesn't come overnight. Your anointing don't come because you got a gift to preach or a gift to sing. That anointing has to be cultivated. That anointing has to be tried because God is just not pouring out his spirit just on anybody. Because the Bible says seeing that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. See what God is giving you when he anoints you is a treasure. And what you see now is many people are trying to prostitute the anointing. Many people are trying Trying to use their gift to, right. to manufacture up something because that's what the devil does. He's the great is imitator there is on the earth. But see, you got to have spiritual discernment to recognize the real anointing from the fake anointing. But see, the one helps you to understand real anointing from somebody doing something in their self is that when you anointed yourself. See, when you know what it took to get an anointing, you know when somebody really ain't anointed. So as I begin to look at its worth, the oil of the Lord began to deal with me on how oil was made. Now we all know how oil was made, but I'm going to take my time. Come on, Lord, explain, explain, explain. Yeah. Amen. In the old times, they would take the oil yeah. and they would go to the olive tree. And the first thing that they would do, they would either shake or beat the tree in order for the olives to fall to the ground. And what I want to tell you is sometimes we get discouraged in the shaking in time thinking that the Lord is against us. But God said, I'm just getting ready to get some oil out of your life. Things have to be shaken. The definition of shake is to move an object up and down from side to side with rapid, forceful, jerking movement. And sometimes your life can go through some rapid Jerking right, forceful right, movements, right, and you don't know what's happening in your life. Why is things being shaken upside down? God is saying, Because I'm getting ready to get some oil out of your life. But sometimes, what we do is we get discouraged in the shaking in time, we get discouraged when things start going chaos. But God is telling you, In the midst of what you're going through, hold on to your faith, believe me, and know that it's worth the oil. When folks begin to talk about you, know you're just in the shaking in time because God is trying to shake you away out of your comfort zone. Some of us can't move into what God has for us because we done sat in a comfort zone too long. We can't tell what we can't do and what God won't do in us. So God said, so since you won't move, I'm going to come shake you up a little bit. I'm going to start getting things all upside down. I'm going to shake you up. See, the purpose of them shaking is because the olive 
is a delicate fruit. Yes. I didn't even know olive was a fruit until I looked it up. All right. Olive is a delicate fruit. Yes. Didn't know olive was a fruit till I looked it up. Amen. But olive is a delicate fruit. The Bible said right. that I have ordained you that you should go forth and that your fruit should remain. The Bible speaks about in the Bible in the book of Galatians, the fruits of the spirit. So here it is. The olive is a fruit. See what God is when he pours that oil out on you. The only way the oil can come, there has to be some fruit produced in your life. And God has said, I'm trying to produce some fruit out of your life. So they take the olive and the reason why is because it's so delicate if they, if they snatch it they could bruise it see sometimes you wonder why God shake it he said, and you thinking he's upset he said no because you're so delicate this is the only way I can get you without bruising you see you know that if you look at yourself you don't look like what you've been through but folks wouldn't understand if you begin to open your mouth and tell them the hell that you've been through the times when the devil has spoken to your mind the times when folks kicked you out the, the times when folks turned their back on you and when you look at them and say you don't know what I've been through why because he shook me so delicate. Yes, I was going through the storm and to the rain, but I was still in the potter's head. Yes, I was ridiculed. Yes, I was talked about, but he fought me for me. He's more than the word against me. And because it's worth the oil, shake me, Lord. Throw me, Lord. Reel me and rock me. But I'm willing to suffer persecution. I'm willing to be rejected among men. Why? Because I've got to get an anointing. Because it's worth the oil. Nothing else matters but the oil. Sit, 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 sit. Hold it, hold it. Praise God. Y'all trying to push me. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'll kill you. Hold it, hold it, hold it. The oil. But you got to ask yourself, is it worth the oil? Sometimes they would shake it or they would beat the, beat the, beat the tree to get the olives to come out. See, sometimes God begin to beat you. Yes, yes. Amen. Money begin to get funny. Well, Amen. Yes. You say, Lord, what's going on? Yes. Kicked out of my house, car repo, Lord. Finances all in a mess. Yes. Going through in my marriage. Right. Going through in my body. Right. Going through in my mind. Lord, what is going on? He right. said, I'm just beating the tree. But don't worry, after a little while, you're going to see what I beat. The Bible said, praise God, we've been laying to it for night, but joy is coming in the morning. Why? Because I'm going to get some joy out of your life. I'm going to cause that oil to begin to run. That when people see you, they say, what is it about you? Baby, I done been through the storm and the rain, but I know he's still my deliverer. I've been through trial. I've been through hell. I've been through the test and I've been through the fire, but I'm still standing. Why? Because I had something inside of me that said, I got to get the oil. I got to get the anointing. I'm not satisfied with just a gift. I'm not satisfied with just being able to come to church and lift my hands. But is anybody being affected by my life? See, we got too many Christians they don't have any oil and they're satisfied with coming to church doing a little shout and a little dance and then they go home and nothing is changed but I need some oil then when I walk down the street sinners run and say what must I do to be saved God wants to anoint you and put oil on your life that when you walk up in the in a place the atmosphere has to change why because I got so much oil the Bible said that Paul would walk and his shadows would heal we got to be honest Lord we need the oil to flow again I ain't got to fight again you and you ain't got to fight against me. Why? Because we all got something we fighting for. We ain't, none of us ain't where we need to be. So I'm going to push you to get in that anointed place. And you push me to get into that anointed place. So he shake you. And then they beat you. Another reason why they shake it and beat it, they're trying to separate. The Bible said, come out from amongst of my people. All right. Be separate and yes. holy, yes. said the Lord. Yes. God said, I got to shake up something you done got too carnal. See, when you get too yes. carnally minded, yes. the enemy can start fighting your mind. And when you used to believe God for the victory, now you don't know how it's going to come. Why? Because you done got too carnally minded. The Bible said we walk uh, by faith and not by sight. And see, when you get too carnally minded, you begin to lose faith in God. See, we can believe God for a house, and we can believe God for a car, but can you believe it when the house don't come? Can you still believe it when the car don't come? Can you still believe it when folks say you ain't anointed? Can you still believe God when folks say it ain't gonna work? Can you still stand on what God has told you? Can you still stand and say, let God be true, and every man alive? Can you still stand and say, God, you called me, and you anointed me. I don't care how long I got to struggle. I don't care how long I got to go through, but God, it's worth the oil. It's worth the anointing. It's worth people being delivered. It's worth people 
being saved right. and being set free. My Lord. Yes. So they go through and they shake and they be sit, sit, sit. Man, preach. Glory to God. Glory then the second phase, sit, sit. Okay, Lord, stay, stay, preach, stay. All right. Preach. Then the second phase, My God. after they shake it and they beat it, the Bible, well, the, the process is that they will then begin to wash mm -hmm. the aisles. My Lord. See, God ain't just letting no any type of olive pass through. Right. You can't be anointed with any kind of spirit. Right. You can't be anointed well, with any kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. You can't be anointed doing what you want to do. It takes you being washed. It takes you being clean. It takes you being untraditional. Life. It takes God getting you back at that altar and showing you where you are. It's too it's too much in the church now yeah. where well, we can show everybody else where they at. No, oh, what about me, Lord? Show me where I'm at. I ain't got time to kick you while you're down. I don't have time to kick you to the car. I got too much shit in my life. Lord, wash me and clean me and purify me. As the brother said, the minister said, there's too much pride in the church. There's too much pride in the church. I've never seen it in a day where we have made our enemies our brothers and sisters right. in Christ. There is one enemy and that's the devil. Just because we got disagreements or we don't understand, don't make you my enemy. I still love you the same way because the Bible said your adversary, the devil. He made it, the Bible said the devil is the accuser of the brother. We got to get washed and we got to get clean of our attitudes. We got to get washed and clean of unsubmission. We got to get washed and clean of doing what God wants us to do. That's Amen. right. My God. We got to ask the Lord to wash us, uh, to clean us, Lord, to get us right. Lord, the Bible says you're washed through the words which I have spoken unto me. See, the problem is we're not washed and we become filthy because we've been in, in, uh, inundated with everything of the natural. We've been inundated with the carnal mindset. We've been inundated with what we see on TV. We've been inundated by what the mega churches That's is right. doing. That's We've been inundated by what sister and so, well, sister and so-and-so doing that. But what did the Bible say? See, the there's Bible only one say. thing that can clean you. There's only one thing yeah. that can wash you. And there's one only one thing that I ought to be lighting myself up with. I don't care who doing what. What did the Bible tell me to do? How did the Bible tell me to live? How did the Bible tell me I ought to love? How did the Bible tell me I ought to behave myself in the house of God? Jesus. You got to be washed. See, he's got to wash away all that doubt and unbelief. He's got to wash away generational curses. All right, see, we God. can't move into what God has for us because we're bound by gen See, some people don't believe in generational oh, yeah. curses, but they're real things that go through the bloodline. Oh, yeah. And see, we're not dealing with issues. We done started skipping over issues. Oh, Molestation in the church, we don't want to talk about that. Oh, uh -huh. People just cheating and slipping and dipping and talking. We don't want to talk about that. But well, we right. got to deal with the issue. What is eating away of our anointing? What's yeah. stopping us? from getting into the presence yeah. of God. Yeah. What is causing us to be uh, separated? The Bible yeah. said, as for your sins, you know, I ain't got to get up here and tell you where you're wrong. You know where your sin is, and that's why you got to get out the altar and say, wash me, Lord. Clean me, Lord. I want to be a vessel. Me for the master's shoes. I want to yield my members as instruments of the righteousness, but I can't do it because I'm filthy. I can't do it because I'm done, done. But when you confess your sins, the Bible said, when I saw you polluted in your own blood, I said, live. He'll wash you in his blood. See, it ain't your righteousness, but it's his righteousness. I don't care how much you pass and how much you pray. You don't make yourself righteous. I am that I am by the grace of God. It's his anointing. It's his righteousness. It's his joy. It's his peace living in my life. My God. But you gotta be washed. Yes. You gotta be washed. God, obey God. God is not dealing with tainted oil. God. God is not dealing. See, there was different classifications of oil. All right. Uh -huh. But the best oil there was was extra virgin olive oil. Come on, yeah. now. Yeah. But there were things yep. Yep. that had to be in place for it to be extra virgin yeah. All right. yeah. olive oil. Yeah. Because it had to be pressed at the right temperature. All right. And then it had to be moved and extracted within a certain amount of time. My Lord. See, sometimes you can stay in mess because you want to be in mess. Well, and then it begins to taint your anointing. You don't want to get out of the mess because you're satisfied. So you went from extra virgin olive oil. Now you're good for nothing. Cast down. Need to come back to the altar and be renewed. Oh, 
obey God. Just and obey see, what God. we have to do is we have to be careful Man. that we are not, uh, you know, the FDA. The FDA are the ones who certify. The, the oil yeah. oh, and tells the oil oh, the class take of the time right here. Take we time. have to be careful that we don't be trying to become the FDA and right. tell you what well, you this anointed and you this anointed you this classification and you this classification we have to examine ourselves and say Lord am I even in a classification All right. oh, my God. or have they thrown me away See, because we can get to a point to where we become holier than that. All right. And we might think we olive oil when we're vegetable oil. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> what are you preaching? Olive oil is healthy. Yeah. But they say vegetable oil clogs your arteries. My God. Arteries is how blood begins to flow through the body. And see, you got people in the church clogging up the arteries and clogging up the church because they're not olive oil, they're vegetable oil. They come in with their own agenda. They come in to do what they want to do. They come in to tear down the church. They come in to hold down the church. They come in to back by evil somebody. And under my Bible, when you got some real oil in there, you can flush that thing out. You don't flush everything that's not like God. You ought to be looking life and say what's clogging up my artery? What's stopping me? The Holy Ghost flush it out. Rush me. Clean me and make me new. Oh yeah. Man, oh my God. We have to. See, because when he washes you, he wants to put something in you. That's right. When he washes you, see, because after he cleans you, he want to put something in you. The Bible said when the Son of Man come, shall he bind Faith yes. on the earth. Right. Well, God has said, I'm looking for some faith. That's right. I'm looking for some. When you get done shouting about it, yeah. when you get done speaking in tongues about it, right. when you get done running and jumping and jerking and acting like you got something, He said, I'm looking for your faith. Right. You know, the old song says, Where is your faith? That's what you, he looked and said, Look, but I know you said that you believe me. I know you said that I would work it out for you. Yeah. But then you went home and you started throwing over tables and saying, God, where are you? See, we can pretend real good in the church. Right. 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 We can put our strong face on, on in the church. Right. We can, uh, uh, as they say, we church in here. We can church it real good yeah. when we come to the church and we get around the saints. But your faith is going to tell you from day to day. Did right. you hold on to God? So God, I don't know when you're coming, but I ain't going to let you go. I don't know when my breakthrough is coming. But I'm going to stay right here to my change. All right. Go ahead and pray. Take your time. Yes, you ready to get God. up out of here. Take your time. you preaching good. So after you go through the shaking, the beating, and then you're yeah. washed, then there is the present time. Yeah. Yeah. See, this separates the men from the boys. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. This separates the women from the girls. Okay. This separates the church, church goers from the saints. All right. Well, See, because in the present right. time, they press so hard and begin to crush yeah, yeah. the olives so that the oil My can God. begin to run. See, sometimes we ain't willing to go through the crushing right. process. We see people in the anointing and we say, ooh, I want you anointed. But are you willing to go through are the crushing? Go through it are you willing to go through being rejected of men? Are you willing to have some days alone Come when you're saying, God, what am I to do now? Are you willing to go through times where you can't call on nobody, but you got to say, Lord, I got to know you as myself. Are you willing to say, I can't go by what mama taught me anymore, and I can't go by daddy what taught me anymore, but Lord, reveal yourself to me. See, one of the problems with the church is folks don't have a real relationship with God. They have a relationship with the church, and they have a relationship with the deacon, and they have a relationship with the pastor, but what happens in the midnight hour when the pastor's not there? What happens in the midnight hour when you can't Nobody else. You got to have a real relationship oh, yeah. with God. When folks say you're crazy, when folks say you done lost your mind, do you have a real relationship yeah. with God? That even in the midst of the present, yeah. even in the midst of the fiery trials, Lord, I know you're getting oil out of my life. Yeah. Oh, you break. Slow it down just a few more minutes. That's all right. Take your time. Are you willing? See, see, in the present time, in the present time. Amen. That's when you're going to find out who really with you and who ain't. Oh, that's exactly what you're In the present time, that's what you're going to find out what you really made of. 
See, because you can say all that you this and you all that you that. Amen. But can you, when adversity is facing you, amen, when things are staring you in the face, and folks are saying now, if you was of God, you wouldn't be going. Job's friends came to and told Job. Obviously, you done did something. But the Bible teaches me that Job held on to his integrity. He didn't quit coming to church because the fire got a little hot. He didn't give up on God because the fire got a little hot. He didn't come in here with his head bowed down and look at me and whoa, I got a sad test. It ain't even a testimony, but I'm going to get up and tell her I've been going through and ain't nothing going right. No, but can you come up and say in the midst of what I'm going through, I still got to praise. In the midst of the trials and in the midst of the tests, I still got to praise. See, because in that time, that's when it knows what you're really made of. When your back is against the wall and you don't know how Jehoshaphat said, Lord, we have no might against this great army. Neither do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Why? Because I'm made of something. I got a relationship with you. David said the same God that delivered me out of the lion's head, the same God that delivered me out of the bear's head, going to deliver me out of your head. When you in the pressing time, you got to say, Lord, squeeze me to oil begin to run. Get all the oil out of me. Why? Because it's worth it. To the text, Psalms chapter 23. Yes. Says the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not All want. Right. Amen. What you gotta understand is even when you're going through the Lord is still your shepherd. Yes. Amen. He's leading and guiding you through the power yes. of trials. Yes. And what you can't do is you can't give up or give in because you be impressed. You can't give up or give in because the oil is getting to run. And the Bible said, The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yes. Sometimes God will say in the midst of what you're going through here, I'm going to give you a space of rest. I'm going to let you rebuild yourself. I know you've been battling. I know you've been strong. But let me send a fresh wind upon you. God know what you need when you need. See, it could be just a little service like this. Where folks came and said, well, I don't know if much going to happen. But God said, this is the day I want to pour out my spirit on you. Or you can come to receive something. I know you've been battling. Oh, see, you thought I was going to move in the big cloud. The Bible said the wind came and his voice wasn't in there. The Bible said the lightning and the thunder came, but the Bible said in a still small voice. God said, I'm going to move in a way to where it ain't going to be no big shaking, but I'm going to do something in you that when you leave out of here, you can keep on running and you can keep on fighting. All right. Leading me Preach. to in path of righteousness for his name. Say, yea, though. I walk through the valley and the shadow of death. Yes. He said, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I'm going through this time where it looks like death all around me. I got death in my finances. Yes. Going through in my body, death in my body. Look like uh, death in relationships now. Folks that I hold dear, now it looks like death all around me. He said, but yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow. You know, you can go through a valley experience to where it's like, Lord, where are you at? Lord, I don't see no light here. Lord, what's going on? Heaven, are you open up today? God, God, do you hear my cry? But he said, praise God, he's going to lead and guide you in the, praise God, in the valley and in the shadow of death. He said, and I will fear no evil, because thou art with me. You don't have to fear no evil. You don't have to fear that you're going to die in that state. You don't have to fear that you ain't going to make it out, because God's going to bring you out. So the Bible said, praise God, that you he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Praise God, what you got to understand is God is trying to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What's my enemy? God is getting a feast ready in front of depression. God is getting a feast ready in front of oppression. God is getting a feast ready in front of doubt and unbelief. And God is getting a feast prepared for everybody that said I wouldn't make it. You're getting ready to see the feast. God is making a table in the presence of my enemies. Why is he making a table in the presence of my enemies? He done took me through the storm and he uh, took me to the right house. Huh? But the Bible said he prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Huh? He gets everything beautiful. He begins to deck out the place huh? and he invites all of them. You ought to tell them, huh? you got a beautiful seat here at the banquet. You got a special seat. Why? Because I prepared a table before you in the presence of my enemies. Huh? Well, why is he preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies? You ought to tell somebody because it was worth the oil. And what I went through was worth the oil. So he Prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemy because this is my anointed son.
service. You didn't know why you was coming here to the banquet, but the Bible said that he anoints my head with oil. What you didn't understand is he gonna put some enemies in front of you and they gonna have to see you anointed. They gonna have to see you walk with power. Everything that you lost, they gonna have to see God give it back to you. Why? Because when I was going through the storm and when I was going through the rain, you was laughing at me. You was talking about me. You kicked me while I was down. But now that I'm going through the storm, and now that I'm coming out of my trial, now that I'm coming out of my test, look at the oil that he's poured on my life. Look at how he's anointed me. Yeah, you thought I was going to die, but the anointing carried me through. The Bible said that this supper with him, you're going to reign with him. I had to go through some suffering. I had to go through some trials, but it was worth the oil. I had to go through tests, but it was worth the oil. I had to be lied on. I had to be ridiculed. I had to be kicked out, but it was worth the oil. I had storms and rain, but it was worth the oil. I had to lose home, but it was worth the oil. I had to lose money, but it was worth the oil. Backstabbed, scandalized, but it was worth the oil. I had to be through anything to where you could say it was worth the oil. I been through divorce, but it was still worth the oil. I been lied on, but it was still worth the oil. I been talked about and ridiculed, but it was still worth the oil. I been had family problems, but everything that I've been through, it was worth the oil. So when you see me anointed, understand it didn't come of a night, but understand there was some toiling, understand there was some fighting. The Bible said, Jacob said, I will wrestle with you all night long, but I ain't going to let you go until you bless my soul. See, when you want a real anointing, God, I ain't going to give up through here. I can't let you go till I get that anointing. I can't let you go till I get that breakthrough. I can't let you go till I get my deliverance. I can't let you go till you reign down righteousness as a mighty stream. I can't let you go until you open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't have room enough to receive. I can't let you go through here. Come on, give him praise. Come on, give him praise.